What's good everybody, if you're an outdoorsman, if you go hiking or if you like time lapses and want to capture little critters at night, then this video is for you. So we've got the Pavo JDL201 24 megapixel trail camera. Get ready to see some pretty cool capabilities of this outdoor winter and Arctic proof camera. It does come with a 1080p color camera with night vision. It's got a wide angle lens, 120 degrees. There's also a built-in 2.0 screen. With its four AA batteries, you're gonna be able to have the camera on motion sensor settings for up to six months, again, depending on how much footage you're capturing and what your settings are. So after a few months of testing, it's time for me to review the Pavo Trail camera. Stay tuned for the whole video. What's good, everybody? So today we're gonna to go over this Punvo Digital Wildlife camera. So let's get into the product review unboxing. First, we got the manual. We got this disc plate for wall mounting. It did come with a 32 gigabyte memory card that operates off the adapter. This is the maximum capacity as well, but don't worry, that's plenty of footage. So this is an amount for the camera. It goes in many different sizes, okay. Um, we are also gonna be attaching this to a tree, so we needed this. This goes around the camera. It gave you all the batteries. This is a the old school USB, and it operates on four batteries. And let's take a look at this. Now, this camera has to be made out of a plastic assembly. And then inside here is where the meat is. All right, so now you close this and there it is. Now for the strap, you take this, put it through here, all right? And then you take this and then you tie this around the tree. At the very bottom here is a three quarter inch mount and we can also put that in. And then we can take this and attach it to like a tripod or anything else. Now there's also this here. So this, we can also go and attach it. If this is like a permanent solution, then you can just take this and then attach that as well. So we'll take this off like that, put this through, this goes here, and then basically you can just tighten that up as well. Right. There's different ways that you can do this. Charging port, this is the speaker. This is the AV port, so you can hook this up into like VHS even or TV. Your DC input is right here. Now we do not have a DC charger, we only have this. For, this is for continuous recording. Uh, but then again, if you have a, an outdoor solar panel, you can just plug it into this as well. And this is always gonna be continuous. You put that in right here on the side, clicks in nice and easy, and boom, playback is right over here. This is your motion sensor. It will sense things at a pretty high distance. The furthest we've tested is 17 yards. Uh, so it is motion capture now to get the camera going you're going to make sure to get it on on so when you're ready to record you're going to switch it to on okay you're going to get a five second countdown that basically means that it's setting itself up for motion capture then we're going to go and hang this and you're good to go well how do we know how many minutes or seconds it's recording right so that's where you go into your setup that's the middle so when you go into setup that goes into a different mode altogether and this is where you configure exactly your settings so let's click on menu and i'm going to show you my settings and you should probably switch them to the same thing so there's two arrows one going this way one this way this is how you navigate through the interface this is your enter button at the very top so right now we are in photo and video mode so let's go and leave it at that for your photo resolution you can keep it at smart best photo that's going to pick its best resolution based on the battery life as well and the, whether it's nighttime or daytime uh, we're going to go back to photo series and here we're going to lose three photos in a series this essentially means that if something comes into the frame based on the motion sensor and the camera turns on it's going to take three pictures um instead of just one i would definitely recommend three instead of the one Again, the less photos, the more space you're gonna have for footage. Video resolution, we're gonna pick Smart Best Video, uh, although it almost always records at 1080p as well for me. So we're also gonna leave it at Smart Best Video. Next is your video length. Now again, we're gonna leave it at 10 seconds. What this means is that if something enters the frame of the camera lens, it's going to activate record for 10 seconds. Okay, the longer the duration, the more battery life it's gonna get used and the more footage is gonna get used. So we could, I mean, 10 seconds is enough to see what exactly what's happening, but if you know there's a lot of things happening, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go and up this, say to 15, 20 seconds. Then it's gonna do a continuous 20 second clip every time there's any motion sensing. Audio recording, I like my videos to have audio, so we're gonna leave that on. Shot leg, now shot leg is essentially, um, when the, there's any sort of peripheral movement that the camera senses, um, it's gonna kind of leave it for 10 seconds after the fact, right? To make sure that, that it's gonna catch everything as well, even after the, pick up, uh, the subject is out of the frame. So we're gonna leave that at 10 seconds. Sensitivity, we always have that at middle. You don't wanna have leaves or little fireflies um, activating your camera. Target recording time, we have off, but you could set it on if you want right and then this will essentially start at a certain time i will activate the recording and then end it at a certain time but we don't have anything 
and use for that. So we're gonna go off. Time lapse. Now, time lapse is something that we could set up as like a fun thing, but we're not gonna bother with that. Uh, and then language, and then time and date, photo stamps, password protection, beep sound. All those things are just like your own preferences. But that's basically it. So now to record, you just press this button. Depending on the mode that you're in, it's gonna start recording. So right now this is recording. So let's just do a quick video so you guys get an idea of the resolution here. All right, so we're just here in our living room, just kind of walking. The angle isn't too, too super wide. It is 1080p, it is recording audio right now. This is uh, me talking, so you can see how loud it is. And let's go and hang this camera and see how it functions. Then again, you have this little blue light over here and the strap is actually quite large, so you can definitely tie it around a very thick tree. All right, so we hung the camera right over here. We wrapped it around here. Here's what it looks like. All right, so let's take a look at some footage. We have the camera mounted close because we wanted to see what's happening in the backyard, who is actually eating all the fruit in this garden. So we set up the camera and we saw a giant, giant raccoon. So we were able to go and get a bigger cage to capture it. Next up, we have a family of deer, and you can see that uh, we set up the camera and we can see the deers at about a 17 yard distance and they're pretty clear. So it's really nice to have the ability to watch animals maneuver, wander around your property just for sightseeing or if you wanna see what's exactly happening. So if you had like wolves or something, you can prepare traps. So in overall performance, this camera is pretty good. I have seen many very expensive trial cameras that don't even do half the quality of this camera so i'm pretty satisfied with this especially with the build quality and the encapsulation of this camera to protect it from the elements so i definitely do recommend it or at least have a look at it when you're comparing to other cameras so thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one